I want to talk about this one here, PMA 401, and this is where you really learn how to use Ollie, and this is what you're going to need to do the flare-on challenges. In fact, I think I got this from the flare-on challenges, but maybe it's some easy CTF. Anyway, um, so what we do is we just first we're going to just hack putty, which I think I just found a tutorial on. So you go and run hash calc on it, which I've done, and verify that the SHA-256 starts with 9F9, which it does. That means you have the clean, unmodified putty. Now, putty is just a harmless Windows SSH utility. So you run it once, you understand how it works. You just put in the name of a server to connect to, like ad.samsclass.info, any server that listens on SSH, and then open. And now it prints this message, login as. And now I could put in a name and password and connect to a server. But I don't care about that. I just want to do this much functionality. We're going to mess with how this function works. So I'll close this. All right, and now um, we're going to hack it in Ollie. So we'll launch Ollie Debug, which is your best friend, the main tool I use for the flare-on challenges and many other things. All right, and so now we're going to open. Oh, I'm going to make a copy of Putty first. I like to work with a copy in case I accidentally um, lose my original. Actually, save on top of the original, so I'm going to... Um, there we are. I'm going to try and rename it Putty2. All right. Clean up this extra junk. All right. So now I got a Putty2, which is the same as the original. Now I can open that in Ollie. So here's Ollie. And it's on my desktop. Not the network, but the desktop. All right. There it is, Putty 2. All right. So here's the code uh, that makes Putty work. And we've used this before, I think, in previous projects. Remember, compressing it and such. So we can run it inside the debugger with this, with F9 or this run button. That will run it, and up it goes. And you could uh, give it the name of a server and connect. And that's what we're going to do. OK. AD. Uh, this one, AD. All right, it opens up the login as. All right, so now uh, we want to find the code that prints this login as. So um, in this pane, we're going to search for reference. This is what I love to do. This is the most powerful feature in Ali that I use all the time. It's basically my first step in everything. Right click, search for all referenced text strings. This is wonderful. Now you get a list of all the strings that are used in commands and are usually readable things. And so someplace in here, we're going to find um, login as. So I'll just use find, edit find, or control F probably. Uh, all right, let's see. I'll check my instructions. How do I get to find? Oh, right click find. Everything's always right clicking. Search for text, OK. I search for login as, and I don't get anything weird. It is uh, case insensitive. Login as, let's try entire scope. Ah, there, it moved. Oh, there it is. Here's a login as. Good. So here's something that pushes login as. So I press F2 to put a breakpoint there. Somehow it's not taking my F2. Maybe I got to hit this button, function F2. Oh, good. So I put F, function F2, I put a breakpoint there, and there's another one too. So I'm going to um, search again, search next. And there's the other one at the bottom, login as. So again, I can press function F2. There we are. And there's only two of them. If I search next again, it's not going to find anything. So there are two places, and I don't know which one of them is used to print that message. So it hung up on me from before, which is fine. So now to get back, try back in the general view, I'm going to do debug restart. This is what I always do when I've been uh, doing God knows what to my program. Now I run it. Now I give it the name of the server again, ad.samsclass.info, and open. 
and now it's going to print that message and it hits this one. So now I know where the code is that prints that message. It's right here, 41CB6E. This pushes putty and notice right here, this tells you it's going to be login as. So now we can mess with it. And the, uh, that's the, we use breakpoints to find it. And now we're going to alter the, um, the message. So what we're going to do is reassemble this. I'm just going to press space. I could right click and assemble, but space will do it too. It's going to let me modify that command. Right now it's pushing this address 467C7C. I can just replace the C with a D. Now it's going to change the address by one. And now it's different. If I cancel to end that, I can slide this bar over to see what the command is, if I can only get hold of it. There. Now it is login as instead of login as because I moved it forward by one letter. So I made a modified version of this program. I can save it this way with right click, um, copy to executable, all modifications. This will only copy the modifications made in that segment, and I was in the text segment where the code is. So I always save after every one change. Otherwise, you'll get very frustrated. Copy all. Here's the thing. And now I'm going to save as. And this is why I save file. And this is where I made a copy because I couldn't forget to change the name. This is going to be putty 3. There we go. On the desktop. There we go. And so now I've made a thing called putty 3. And when I run that, I give it the name of a server. It has the different message. Now it doesn't have the L in login as. Now, um, you might want to rebel. This should not be possible at all. Microsoft has had code signing for a long time. Code signing is supposed to prevent this kind of garbage from happening. So you might wonder what's going on here. If you take original putty here and go to properties, and then go to digital signatures, it tells you it's signed by somebody called Simon. And when you look at details, it tells you this signature is OK. That's the original unmodified file. It's signed, and the digital signature makes sure it can't be modified. Now, here's the modified program. If I go to properties and digital signatures, it still says it's signed by Simon. When you go to details, it tells you the signature is not valid. So this is uh, one of the many things about Microsoft that baffles me. It has the signature enforcement. It tells you that. Um, it's not OK, and it lets you run it anyway. It doesn't complain or anything. Uh, you save it. Uh, it's in the instructions, but you save by doing right click, uh, save file, save all modifications, which we're going to do it again in a minute here. So anyway, we've now made a modified version of PuTTY. And then um, I'll do, OK, run the mod, save the modified program, uh, run the modified program. All right. And changing the login message again. You can also change the message. Let's do that. Let's open up Ollie again. And let's work from the original program, which is it's telling me something about I don't have administrator rights. I don't care. All right. Come on. OK, file. Open my original PuTTY 2. Here it is. Now I'm going to uh, go to that, just uh, go, go to expression, because I know the number. Um, it's 41CB6E. There it is. That's the command that's going to print out that message. So I'm going to change it another way. I just there, I'd like to I'd like to move that bar if it'll only let me get hold of it. There, up. There. All right, I'm going to, what I'm going to do instead of changing this address, I'm going to change the contents. So I'm going to right click, follow in dump, um, selection, immediate constant, I think. Yeah, there we are. And here's the code, login as colon. I could change this code here. I could just highlight the word login as and then edit, binary edit. And now I can change it to something else. Like, I think I made it darkness.
there. I can change it and say, okay, it's gonna turn red. Now it's gonna print that message instead. Now if I wanna save it, I do the same process, but I have to go to this pane because I changed the data section, not the text section, not the code section. So here I right click and then copy to executable file. Um, and right click save file and I'm gonna call that one putty four. And that one will print darkness. And there it does, it prints out darkness. So anyway, now that shows you the two ways to modify a file by modifying the code and the text. And now there are some challenges here and I'll show you the first one of them in some detail because it's very interesting. All right, so uh, and there's a couple flags you get there. All right, now these, we're gonna patch these things like 0000.exe. So let me bring up one of these and this is where you're learning the main trick you're gonna need. I think I've already got one of these in the documents folder. Let me take a look. Uh, downloads probably. Yep, there it is. I'm gonna copy it. Put it on a desktop. All right, I'm gonna work from here. And again, I'm gonna make a copy of it. And call it 000A. Cause I'm gonna modify it and I don't wanna mess up my original. All right, these are command line programs. So let's just see what they do. When you have an unknown program, one simple thing to do is just run it might just look at the strings too, but I'm going to start by running it and see what it does. So now if I run the 000, it says launch code. So you put in a number and then it insults you. My dog figured it out before you. It's a guessing game. You're supposed to figure out what the right launch codes are. That's what it does. So um, we're going to hack this game with Ollie. Ollie debug. Reload that thing. Okay, get rid of the stupidness. Okay, there's desktop, there's 000, I'll open the A version. And here it is. The awesome thing about this program is you can see the entire program in just one page of Ollie. As you see on the right, uh, let me just make this window uh, here move over. There it goes. All right, so it use puts to print the word launch codes, then it scans a number from the user, then it does something, and then it prints either, wow, you got it, or I think my dog figured it out. So this is winning, and this is failing, and that's it. That's the whole thing. It's just 20 or 30 assembly language commands to code. Now, it is incredibly obvious how to cheat. It reads this from the user, and it puts it, so here it does scan F to read something from the user, then it does some kind of comparison here, and then a jump and the jump might take you to 40205A, which is here. That's what's gonna say your dog figured it out. So it is this jump that is causing us to fail. So this comparison is comparing to the right value. And let me show you actually one good way to do this. Uh, if I, um, so if I just step through it with F8, F8 will step to the next part. So function F8, okay, it's taking step after step. So here it goes. Now. I should be able to see the window, and here it is. It just printed the word launch codes, okay? So now I'm gonna give it my 12 again and press enter. I guess I have to go forward a little more. Let's give it F8 again. When it gets to the scan F, okay, now it's listening. Now I'm gonna put in the um, 12. Okay, one, two, enter. Okay, now I'm just gonna keep going and read, look at this area here. This shows you the current parameters for each command. If I press F8, which is here, okay, uh, it's going to do a comparison. So it's moving, finding something. Okay, here it's calling some routine. Now I'm gonna press F8 and it'll do that and return from that routine. Now it's back and this looks like what EAX came from that routine. Now it's gonna do a comparison of that to um, C. C is the 12 I typed in. This is apparently the right answer. I was supposed to give it some huge number like that. And so I'm gonna fail because they're not gonna match. So if I press F8, 
it's going to tell me jump is taken. You failed, jump not zero. So when the jump is taken, I press F8 again, and it goes down here, and it's about to print the insult. So I know if, I, it's always, if it's always the same, I could look at that number, and that would be the right number to put in. But I'm going to cheat another way. I'm going to modify the code, which is easier. Um, here's where it finds the right answer. Here's where it compares it, and here's where it jumps. So really, all I need to do is not do the jump. Now, in the project, I think I killed the compare line, too. But really, all I need to do is not do this jump, and it'll, I will win. So I can just press assemble and just fill with not. So I can put in not. Just do nothing. There are two bytes of command there. When I assemble, it's going to put in two knops, and that's all I have to do. I now need a modified game that I will always win. So I right click, um, copy to executable, all modifications, copy all, right click, save file, and this is going to be a 0, 0, 0 a mod. There. And now I should always win this game. So I go back to my command prompt. Run the modified version. And now if I give it 12, I win. And I get a letter J. So I made a game where we always win. There are a lot of other ways to cheat, but that's one way. And like I said, this is one way to learn to use uh, debuggers is um, learn how to cheat at games. And that's really what the flare-on challenges are all like. So. Let um, me see what else there is in this project, because this one is a long one. There's a lot to do. I think after this, you do modifications of that. So after you've hacked the first one, and you have to hack it exactly this way to get like the expected hash value, exactly the way I specified here. I say, when I did it here, I knocked out more than just two bytes worth of stuff, which works too. All right. But you'll have to make sure you do it exactly this way if you want to get the points for the flag. And then there's three EXEs. You have to patch all three of them. You'll get three letters. And then there's 19, so you might be getting tired of doing it by hand. And then there's 256. The original challenge that I did was from a captured flag, and there were 67,000 of them you had to do. And so if you're going to do this many, you're going to have to write code to do it. And I have an example of uh, some hints of some Python code to do it here. Um, here's an example of Python code that will run them all for you. You'd have to write, and here's how you patch them all. You would read the file and then modify it and then write the modified file out. And you can even run the file from Python 2, like this. Now that's what I did. I made a program to patch all of them, and another program to run them all and collect all the answers. Although there are many other ways to do it. So anyway, you can try that. And of course, the last bits there are all extra credit, because that's requiring a little programming and stuff. It's a little harder. All right. And so I think that's all the demos I planned for today. Let me stop this recording.